Hey folks, Todd Colburn here with your aerospace structure series. This lecture is on buckling of curved panels. It's quite similar to what we did with cylindrical panels. Let's see how it works. So if we have a curved panel under compression, uh, we can come to this chart to evaluate the buckling allowable. For example, let's say we have a fuselage. The underside of the fuselage, the bottom skin, tends to be in compression. The skin is typically broken into panels by frames and stringers. We can take that frame spacing as the length and that stringer spacing as the width. And that panel is under just almost exactly this condition. So if we have a panel under compression, we're going to come here. We're going to use the same Z parameter that we use for, or almost the same Z parameter that we use for cylinders. If we have a curved panel, though, that's in compression, you'll notice from a little sketch on here that the long dimension is the straight dimension, the curved dimension is the loaded dimension, and that defines our B as that smaller curved dimension or the loaded dimension. We're going to plug in that B into this formula for Z. We're going to plug in the radius of curvature of that structure, which would be the diameter of an aircraft often, if it was an aircraft part, the thickness of the skin and the Poisson's ratio to calculate Z. We then just come to this log-log curve and we go up to our R over T ratio. You'll notice we have values between 500 and 1000. We can interpolate between those values or just read the graph or even estimate just a little bit beyond the graph if that's appropriate. We're typically going to ignore the theoretical values since they're a little bit unconservative. You'll notice that all these values here, the solid lines are for simply supported edges on all four edges are simply supported. And if we end up having clamped edges, then we would go from the, the solid line and then diverge onto that dashed line. So that means that uh, if your Z parameter is very large, those two curves will be identical. But as the Z parameter gets smaller, those curves deviate from each other. Okay. So uh, going back to our panel on the bottom of fuselage, we could also evaluate that as a flat panel. That would be generally conservative, give conservative results. If we want a little better estimation of what it actually does, we'd use this curve panel, curve panel approach, get Z, calculate, go to the R over T, calculate our K sub C, plug it into this formula. Now let's say we have a curve panel loaded in shear. If we have a curve panel loaded in shear, we need to differentiate between whether the panel is wide or long. Now these to your definition of wide and long is probably different than the my definition, and we're probably both different than the original researchers. But what's important is that we wrap our mind around the way this was defined and how these formulas are used. That means a long panel is defined as one that has the uh, longer edge is the straight one. And, a, uh, and so if we notice that our long dimension is straight, we're going to call that a long panel. You'll notice also that this curve is for simply supported edges. If we have simply supported edges, this is valid. If they're clamped edges, we're going to find a different curve, so stand by for that. So if we have simply supported edges, and that's usually how we will idealize these, if we go back to that panel on the bottom of, of the fuselage, remember we're, uh, that panel is broken into smaller pieces by the frames. The frames often don't touch the skin, but they'll be attached to shear ties that touch the skin between the stringers, and those provide a decent support but not a lot of rotational stiffness. So usually a uh, simple support is sufficient. Also, those panels are often riveted to stringers on either side. The stringers are thin-walled members, hat sections or Z-sections, usually with a really low torsional stiffness. Hence, the simple support is the best idealization for most structures we're going to find in, aer in aircraft kind of analysis. However, if you run into a case where you have a big old uh, shear tie of the frame that's maybe a big T-section with rather thick flanges, or maybe there's doublers, or maybe there's a bulkhead that ties in, or maybe your stringer is a big old fat section that has uh, maybe a closed section that has some torsional rigidity, or it's attached to a bulkhead with vertical members that provides torsional rigidity, then you might say, nah, this is clamped, this is not simple, and then it's appropriate to 
use the clamp condition with the curve we'll show in a bit. So if we have simple supports though, we're going to use this curve. We're going to calculate our Z, uh, go up to our A over B ratio this time, and then slide over to get our K sub S. We plug it into this formula, which gives us the allowable stress value. And if you only have this one shear on the panel, then you can write your margin of safety directly. The shear stress allowable divided by the shear stress on the panel minus one. Now, if we have combined loads, for example, that axial load and shear, then we're going to need to use an interaction equation, and we'll deal with that after we're done giving you all the pieces of analysis that you need to do that. So stay tuned for that. So if our panel is not long but wide, what that means now is the long dimension is curved, as you can see here. Then we're going to classify that as a wide panel. Once again, we're talking simply supported edges. We calculate our Z, go up to the A over B ratio, slide over. And you can this curve is also cool because it shows you not only the A over B ratio, but the curve that kind of aligns with a cylinder. So it should give similar to a cylinder kind of results if your A over, if your, uh, a over B ratio is large enough. So we come up with our Z, take the A over B ratio over the side, we get our K sub S plug in here, and that gives us the allowable stress if we have shear on that panel by itself. This is a curved long panel and shear with clamped edges. Once again, this is identical to two curves ago, but now we have clamped edges. We calculate Z, go to A over B, calculate K sub S, plug into the same exact formula. And for wide edges, if that long dimension is curved, we come here, Z, A over B, K sub S, plug and chug, write the margin of safety if it's the only load. So far, so good. So we know how to evaluate curved panels in compression and in shear for both simply supported and clamped edges. This little curve uh, we, uh, is for uh, spheres under external pressure. So if we and we so if we have a sphere and it's loaded with external pressure, like a lot of tanks, dirigibles, and other things like that, then we can use this curve to estimate the crush pressure. So what we're talking about here is crush pressure. So radial pressure acting inward on this spherical structure. Now this curve is a little tricky to read because D is not necessarily the diameter of this sphere. If, if we want the crush pressure on a sphere, the entire thing being crushed, then we will plug in the diameter uh, there. We're going to have the D now will be twice the radius, right? That radius is the radius of curvature. The D is the distance between supports. And if we have a full sphere, then that D will be two times R. So that's how we can evaluate that. So we're going to come here. We're going to calculate the Z as the D over RT. So if we have a full radius, if we're looking for crush on a full sphere, then D is actually twice the radius. We plug that in to get our Z with the R and the T, right? We get the R on the bottom as well. We come up to our R over T ratio, do the best to interpolate between the two values, uh, not the theoretical line, but the two R over T values. And then we read the K, which I'm calling K sub P, that pressure coefficient. And that will allow us to calculate what the allowable stress is from those uh, pressures. Now, if we want to write the margin of safety on that, remember we can go back to the hoop and longitudinal stress definition. And remember for a sphere, both hoop and longitudinal stresses are the same. They're both equal to the longitudinal stress for a PR over 2T, same as the longitudinal stress for a, a cylinder. And we would then, we could then calculate if the stress is PR over 2T, you can actually take this allowable and convert and, ca and calculate the pressure, the critical pressure from that. As we showed last lecture in our cylindrical, uh, in the same way that we did that for cylinders last lecture. We're actually going to show that a little bit further in a few minutes. So stay tuned if that's not clear to you. Regardless, this is how we get the allowable uh, stress in the in the sphere based on external radial pressure. Now, if we have burst pressure, burst pressure will never buckle the thing. It will rip the thing apart. So we're not going to evaluate buckling for a burst pressure. 
unless we actually end up having combined loads. And in that case, that burst pressure has a stabilizing effect. And we will calculate our stress ratios as a negative value. We talked about that last lecture, and we'll talk about it again uh, in a few minutes. You okay, Lofa? Okay, that was for uh, a sphere with radial pressure. This is for a cylinder with radial pressure. Now, remember, we covered this last lecture because this is for a cylinder. However, if we have a curved panel under radial external radial pressure, it will behave in the same manner, or at least we're going to evaluate it in the same manner as we did for a cylinder. Therefore, I put the curve here as well. This is the same exact curve. So if we have a curved panel in, in uh, ex external radial crush pressure, we will come here, calculate our L squared over RT, square root of 1 minus Poisson's ratio to get our Z, slide on up to the R over T ratio that's appropriate, calculate our K sub P, plug into this equation, calculate the allowable stress. We then, I gave you in this case, I give you the, the equation from straight from the hoop stress equation of the critical buckling allowable pressure based on that allowable stress. So you can plug into the second equation here to calculate what the critical pressure is. You can either write your margin of safety on a stress basis or a pressure basis with identical results. If we have external hydrostatic pressure, now hydrostatic pressure is usually associated with water because water causes an increase in pressure as you get more depth. But actually this case goes beyond that. Anytime you have something that can be approximated as a linear increase of pressure across the panel, or the, the curved panel, you can idealize that as a hydrostatic pressure and use this curve. We calculate the Z, go to the R over T, calculate KP, calculate the allowable stress, the critical stress, and then use the second equation to calculate the corresponding critical pressure, and you can write the margin of safety either on a stress basis or on a pressure basis. Got it? So as I've been promising, if we have combined loads, we're going to use these interaction curves. Some of them are similar to what we saw for cylinders, but we want to make sure we come here so we're using the correct equations. If we have axial load and shear, this is the uh, interaction equation, and we do have a closed form in margin of safety equation for that. We can just plug and chug in this equation. If we have axial compression with internal crush pressure, then this is true. This is based on that RP is the compressive stress over the compressive allowable stress, or the crush pressure, the actual pressure over the allowable crush pressure. Both of those terms are negative. Hence, uh, this will give us the margin of safety. And if we have a crush pressure uh, with axial compression, it's going to make buckling worse. However, if you have a burst pressure, then you're going to note that that's a negative compression, which makes the R sub P go negative. You've got two places you put RP into this equation, and one of them, that negative, will change things and give you a fatter margin of safety, which accounts for the stiffening effect of that burst pressure. That's how we do that. We talked about that last lecture in uh, the cylinders. If we have shear and internal pressure, this is our equation. We're going to handle that the same way, and we do have a closed form interaction curve. And then this is just reminding us hoop and longitudinal stresses and how we can convert those to pressures. In those other equations where I gave you the pressure, the critical pressure right there on the curve, this is what was done, and this is how it's done. Got it? So that's all I got for you. That's how you evaluate curve panels. It's very similar to what we did for, for cylindrical uh, structures. And these two, the curve panel and the cylindrical structures, coupled with the other stability studies, arm us pretty well for with being able to evaluate aircraft and rockets. Hope you find this helpful. If you do, punch the like button. If you got any comments, punch that out for me. I'll do my best to respond. Enjoy. <laughs>